We are getting word that we actually do see that plane coming in just in the very far distance. It is making its way into the Montgomery area right now. We do know it's going to set. It's going to land at Maxwell Air Force Base. We were originally told it was going to be about 1235, but we know that Air Force One actually has the capability to fly a little faster than planned. So it looks like yeah. they've done a pretty good job of making up some time here. I'm not exactly sure which uh, camera this is, but that looks like Maxwell Air Force Base. It looks like Air Force One is actually Yep, getting, that's Maxwell slowly, slowly approaching. Yes, it is descending now. It might take some time before it, between it actually landing and then taxiing onto the uh, the tarmac there where the president will actually get off of Air Force One. Yeah, this is a massive plane. It's a Boeing 747-200V. We mentioned 4,000 square feet. It's three stories. So this is a huge plane. Once it does touch down, it will taxi around and eventually get near those two helicopters. Marine One will be the helicopter the president ends up on. And, of course, all the rest of the staff members will be on the other helicopter as well. They will both make that journey down to Troy, probably about a 20 to 25 minute trip on the helicopter to Troy, not long at all, where they were land close to that Lockheed Martin facility. And from there, they'll get to go inside and see what those workers do. But that is an impressive a sight. Very, a very cool shot there, Air Force One, slowly descending over the capital city, Montgomery, getting ready to approach. Matt, you can see the buildings in the distance, Maxwell Air Force Base. We have our team there live standing by, Aaron Davis, Touchdown. Ted Hughes. <laughs> There it is. Yeah. Do you know that this is the same plane that has been used as Air Force One since 1991? The same two planes, actually. As a matter of fact, they actually always travel in pairs. So there is another airplane that looks look just how, like look this one this is. that is yeah. landing somewhere else. This is a huge plane. This is a, a, a three-story facility. Yeah. It is It is a, a mobile office. It's a mobile command center for the president, complete with everything you can even imagine. But this pilot, you said there's something new about this guy. This is his very first trip. Yeah, this is the, the 17th presidential pilot. He just took this position last week, last Thursday wow. is what I'm told. So this will be his very first trip. He's obviously been uh, with Air Force One. He's been a part of, of that division for a very long time. But this is his very first trip as the chief Air Force One pilot uh, to make this to make this trip. The 17th chief Air Force One pilot. Montgomery, Alabama will always be his first stop with the president. There you go. Yeah, it's kind of neat to have a history. special, yeah, a little special, special place right there. And again, this is a live look. Maxwell looks like Air Force One is there. Air Force One has touched down. On the other down. side of the screen, we have a look at Troy. That's where the president will be heading a little bit later on. That's the Lockheed Martin facility. We're told he will go to that facility at Lockheed Martin, spend about maybe an hour talking to employees, walking around, touring the facility, getting a look at those Javelin missiles that they make. And we heard from the experts. We heard from Sally and Ashley about what's going on. There these Javelin missiles. They've already sent 5,000 of those to Ukraine. And these are high-powered, high-tech weapons. They have the ability to travel two and a half miles and hit targets. They actually get up up in the air above those targets and find the easiest spot to penetrate in the armor to go through them. They've been very effective for the Ukrainian forces uh, fighting off those Russian troops. And that's why the president is here in Montgomery making his way to Troy to see firsthand for himself how these weapons are made, where these weapons are made, and also thank the folks in Troy at that facility for a job well done helping keep other people safe around the world. I thought it was really interesting what Ashley said, too, and maybe this is just me. When I think of missile, I think of a very large weapon, but yeah. she described how, sm how small how small the missiles were and that you could actually hold it over your shoulder. So yeah. that was very, and I love the fact that it says made in, made in Troy, made in made Troy yeah. Alabama. Alabama. But that's exactly City why Troy. it's been such a, a key factor in the war in Ukraine, because it is small. It's easy. It's just uh, one person is able right. to, it's portable. Basically, it's a portable missile, but it's also very easy to train. So the Ukrainian forces who were not necessarily uh, as organized as Russian forces have, have been able to pick up these weapons and to make the most of them. And they can work day or night. They also have the capability. They were armed with that fire and forget technology. So you can fire that that weapon, that missile. It'll go as far as two and a half miles. And then you have an opportunity to take cover or maybe to reload or uh, to regroup, so to speak, before that missile ever hits its target. It's also a pretty cool technology that it can it can also hit that direct line, but it also has a little arc technology to it. So you can also shoot it as an arc. That's where it gets its javelin name, by the way, because it's very similar to that spear that they throw in those track and field events. So it can shoot up into the air, and then that's where it's been so effective because it can it can penetrate the top of a tank. And we know that those Russian troops have most of, of their invasion has been in those tank type of vehicles. And so that's why that javelin missile has been so effective. President Biden is now in. 
in Alabama, rolling across the tarmac there at Maxwell Air Force Base. Our own Aaron Davis has been there since several hours ago, kind of keeping track of what's going on. Aaron, now the Air Force One has landed. Kind of paint the picture for us. What's going on there? Yeah, the plane, Air Force One is kind of coming in, as you can see it. It's going to turn around and park so that the president and the plane will be facing outwards when they leave. And so when the president gets off, he'll, of course, be greeted by members of the Secret Service and other people looking out for him, but also by Montgomery Mayor Stephen Reed, Maxwell Air Force Base Colonel Aries Mincer, and Lieutenant General James Hecker, who's the commander and president of the Air University here on Maxwell Air Force Base. So after a short rendezvous, they tell me that they're going to shake hands, take pictures, and then everyone that is headed to Troy will be getting on the various helicopters spread out here across the tarmac and taking that quick 15-minute flight over to Troy. Aaron, how many helicopters do you see? Do you have any idea about how many people are traveling with the president? Well, I do know that Congresswoman Terry Sewell is in there, and there are members of the press that are in there, as, along with normal party members that do travel with the president. And so there are five helicopters in total on the tarmac. Two of them, we believe, will have the president and other members that are close to him. And the other three planes could just be there for security. And obviously, as you can hear, Air Force One is very, very loud. Aaron, what was it like watching Air Force One land just now? It is pretty spectacular. I've never been this close to a president before, and I spoke with the people from Montgomery who are going to be meeting the president, and they tell me they've never met President Biden before. I talked to a few presidents maybe before their presidents, but it is a very exciting thing to witness, especially witnessing a little bit of history since it's his first time here since being elected. So super excited to be out here. I know you're sitting basically right in the middle of the engine out there, so I'm not sure how well you can hear us. <laughs> but you did mention several Montgomery dignitaries are there. Talk about, you mentioned Mayor Reed. Who all is there to get a chance to maybe get a chance to say hello, get a picture with the president before he makes that quick trip down to Troy? Yeah, it's very loud, but the people who are going to be here, like I said, are Montgomery Mayor Stephen Reed, Colonel Aries Mincer with Maxwell Air Force Base, and also Lieutenant General James Hecker, who is the commander and president of Air University that is here on Maxwell Air Force Base. And as you can see right now, the plane has kind of stopped. They're setting out the brakes, and the ladder is ready to welcome the president, and I'm sure he'll be one of the first people off, hopefully, so we'll be able to see him pretty soon. Such a cool shot there, Aaron. Make sure you wave as hard as you can so we can see you. I will. I'll be like, it's me. <laughs> it's, it's always neat when the president, it's just such a neat sight to see the president when that door opens to the plane, the president walks out onto that platform just before he descends the stairs. A lot of times in almost every stop, he's greeted by a pretty good crowd. What's the crowd like where you are? Well, it's actually a very limited crowd. The press, there's about five or six of us, and the crowd, as you can see right here on um, the shot, those are the three people that are going to be meeting the president, Montgomery Mayor Reed, Lieutenant General Hecker, and Lieutenant Colonel Aries Mincer, and they're about to approach the plane right now. And that's really the crowd that is here to greet the president, and everyone else is working with the White House staff, making sure things move as smoothly and swiftly as possible. Aaron, it's usually a busy time in the air around the Montgomery Regional Airport and Maxwell Air Force Base. Have you seen any other planes in the sky around this time? Has everything pretty much stopped until the president lands and gets on the way down to Troy? Everything has seemed to pretty much stop until the president is on his way. Every time we've, which is a good thing in a way, because every time we see something in the sky, we know, oh, that's something else that's happening. Whether it's his helicopters landing or right now Air Force One being here, we knew when we saw the spec, we we're like, that's Air Force One. And it came in very quickly, came from a spec to now this full size plane immediately. And you can see some people approaching the plane. And they have opened the doors just awaiting the ladder to get there for the president to come out. I know, Aaron, when I was there at Maxwell, the folks there told me this morning that there would be some road closures uh, around Maxwell Air Force Base for security purposes. Give us an idea of exactly where you're located on Maxwell Air Force Base. Can you see any other roads or buildings that are off base outside the gates? No, so we actually cannot see anything that's off the gate. We're looking like in one of the back corners of the base behind the Air University here. So it's pretty secluded and we got here so early this morning that things were pretty open and seemed to be flowing as normal. But I can imagine with the security just being in this one location, 
that the roads around are probably shut down for security purposes. Aaron, give us a little perspective as far as where the helicopters are in relationship to that plane. I know we're zoomed in tight on the door right there. The president will come down. He will say hi to some dignitaries, Mayor Reed and folks from Maxwell Air Force Base. Is it a pretty short walk to get to those helicopters and head off, or are they parked pretty far away from Air Force One? Yes, it's a pretty short walk. Um, he'll come down the stairs and walk just a couple of yards to get to the helicopter. And as you can, well, as you can see or maybe not see, the Mayor Reed and everyone that is waiting to greet the president is in place, and they are ready to what it looks like is going to be a very swift greeting and movement onto the helicopter. Since we know the main reason he's here is to visit Troy and see Lockheed Martin and those missiles that they've been producing. Aaron, talk about the size of that plane. We've talked a lot about just how big it is. We know that it's three stories. It's a Boeing 747-200. That's a large plane with some really big engines. When you're up next to it, what can you compare it to? I don't think I've ever seen anything this big <laughs> in my life before, honestly. I can't compare it to anything. Maybe a spaceship? <laughs> But I, I know, I know there's at least room in there, a few stories, like you said. I know they have a conference room in there. And it's not just the president and White House officials. Press members of D.C. were also on that plane, and they've all already onboarded. And as you can see, here's the president coming down from the plane, getting ready to greet the Montgomery delegation. And like I was saying, the Washington, D.C. press is here by the engine, taking pictures of the president as he is touchdown in Alabama for the first time since being elected. I wonder if that ever gets old. Talk about right. making an entrance too. Getting off Air right. Force One and you're coming down the stairs and all the, the officers in the military are saluting as you come down and you're greeted by local authorities and the mayor of Montgomery. That could be a pretty impressive way to enter a city. I've worked on base for years and I always get chills when I see the airmen and everyone in position, ready to greet the dignitaries. It's a huge deal for our nation and our state. There's Congresswoman Terry Sewell as well. It is. It's a big deal. It's, it's a huge honor to host a president, the president of the United States in, in any city, at any Air Force base. It's, it means a lot, and, and especially in this case, particularly the timing of this really puts Maxwell Air Force Base on an international stage. We know that uh, President Biden is probably trying to send a message with this trip, that this is not just a uh, fly-by-night, just a a flippant trip. This is this is a trip with a purpose, and we know that he's he's probably trying to send a direct message to to the Russians, specifically Russian President Vladimir Putin, with this visit. So this is going to put Maxwell Air Force Base, the, the city of Montgomery. We see the the mayor there, Stephen Reed. Also, the city of Troy and the Lockheed Martin facility on an international stage. The world is going to be watching just exactly what the president does while he's here. You know, so many of these presidential trips too are for reasons that aren't so happy to talk about. This is actually good because we're recognizing workers from Pike County, Alabama. They're doing a great job. But so many of the past presidential visits in just the last 20 years, we had President Trump come to Beauregard on March, after the March 3rd tornadoes in March of 2019. President Obama in 2011 came to Tuscaloosa. President Bush was in Enterprise after eight students were killed in a tornado there. So, so many times that the presidents do come to visit Alabama. It's usually after a natural disaster or maybe something negative. Of course, President Bush did visit Tuskegee University, and that was for a good reason. He's highlighting some of the technology that was back in 2006. He did have a problem with some of the potholes in the road by Tuskegee <laughs> sure University, did. but I know Mayor Johnny Ford got on those and got those <laughs> fixed. But most of the times, it seems like a presidential visit comes after something tragic has happened. And this is one of those occasions we can actually be proud. And you can smile a little bit as the president comes in because you know he's coming here to thank the people of Alabama. And the president, Terry Sewell, um, Mayor Reed, Colonel there, all smiles. I know Aaron kind of gave us a landscape there, said that the two helicopters, Marine One, are pretty close, so hopefully we won't have to walk too far in the Alabama sun, because I know it's hot hot out there on the tarmac, but they are chatting some. Aaron said she didn't really know how long they would be kind of hanging out, but we know that they have a whole crowd, including our crew. Time in the air. They were supposed crew. to be here around 1235, and it's only 12, probably 20 when they got out of the plane. So they, uh, they so. I guess he maybe told the pilot to step on hey, it. Hey, when you're yeah. in Air Force One, I think you do what you <laughs> yeah. want. Yeah, well, and like you mentioned, you mentioned clearing out the airspace. So I'm sure they probably did clear out a little airspace. They punched the gas a little bit. Maybe they got a little a little draft. They might have caught a little draft on the way in and, and just sped up that trip a little bit faster than it was originally supposed to happen. But you're right when we talked about the presidents and their visits and how typically, you know, the presidents work and when they meet people, they generally are going to meet people only 
in their lowest of lows mm -hmm. or their highest of highs. Obviously, it's very exciting to meet the President of the United States if you're not dealing with a national or natural disaster or a national tragedy. Um, so that's, you know, it is kind of exciting. This trip is exciting to see that uh, he's going to meet these people in their high, when they can celebrate something, when they have they have something truly to celebrate. And a lot of times, too, these presidential visits are pretty much a one or two days notice. It is a massive undertaking to get resident ready for a presidential visit, whether you're at Maxwell Air Force Base, whether you're a member of the media, whether you work at Lockheed Martin, there are security checks, background checks, the facilities have to be secure, they have the good dogs come in to sniff around. So anytime the president comes to town, he comes in, he stops, he shakes hands, he looks at what's going on. But for the towns that are there, it is a lot of work to get ready for a presidential visit. I think that's what makes it kind of special because you know that your town, your city, your community put a lot, a lot of hard work to make sure when the president arrives it is safe and welcoming. And you always want to put your best foot forward, but you're right, it is a lot of work, but the president and the White House and Secret Service, the Pentagon, they have teams in place that do this every single day. They keep a, 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 a little close jog there for a little, he jog. He a little trot jog. jog. Look at that. Yeah. He's, maybe he's in a little bit of a hurry to get uh -huh. down to Troy. They have teams that do this every day that pay close attention to the president's schedule, that go ahead of the president. There are teams that have been here for several days already, making sure that this area is very secure. We heard Sally and Ashley talk about all of the steps they had to go through. They needed their birth certificates, their driver's license, uh, and still that wasn't enough. They still yeah. had to get their hours ahead of time and, uh, and weren't able to take their hairspray with them. The president just got on Marine One there. The Marines were standing by and they are getting ready to take off to head on down to Troy where Ashley and Sally are. As as we just mentioned, I'm, I think we talked about it, what, about a 15? Yeah, it won't be long. It's about a 15-minute yeah. minute flight. Yeah, maybe 20 minutes tops, but it, yeah, as we've seen, the president can make up some time. Right, yeah. <laughs> so, Those are some big helicopters that match the big plane he flew in on as well. But again, we mentioned before that any and a helicopter the president on is known as Marine One. If they're vice president on the helicopter by himself, that will be identified as Marine Two. But a short trip down to Troy, Alabama from Montgomery. There'll be two identical helicopters flying down right there. Sometimes that's for security reasons. Don't want anybody to figure out which helicopter the president might be on. But it should be a short trip down to Lockheed Martin. They will land right there at the facility. And then there is a big crowd waiting from the president. will get to see up close and personal. It's one thing to see video or stuff on the news at night about those Javelin missiles and how they work, but he's going to get a chance to see how they're made, the pieces and parts that go together to make those things as destructive and effective as they are. I love that he's going to get to see that stamp that goes on it, the one yeah. that says made in Troy, that. Alabama. That's what he's going to get to see, and I hope that's what uh, not just the President of the United States remembers, I hope that's what the world remembers. And I'm assuming they're going to take off here maybe any minute now and then head up. There we go. Right just, right there we go. Here. I guess they heard me. <laughs> I told them earlier they were started up early. I didn't know you had that <laughs> kind of power. What else can you do? Well, I don't. I don't want to do anything <laughs> dangerous. <so. laughs> well. We do. Yeah. Yes. So this is this is the helicopter. We did see the president board this particular helicopter. So we know that typical protocol is for the president to take off first. This helicopter will take off first. We're seeing it just barely lift off the ground here. It's going to kind of push off to the side. Just hang back a little bit. Give it some time for that other helicopter to take off. So that, that'll give a chance for all of his staff, all the people who are traveling with him. They'll board that second helicopter. They'll get in the air and they'll actually get ahead of the president. They want to be there before the president arrives. So they'll be on the ground. They'll make sure that everything is secure, that everything is ready for the president to make his landing and then his grand entrance. Yeah, traveling with the president can be quite an ordeal. A lot of times when the president is traveling to remote areas, there will be two cargo planes that fly side by side with Air Force One carrying maybe vehicles, equipment, anything that might be needed. So when the president lands, there's no need to get anything like a car or something to get through wherever they're going. Of course, today it was a simple trip from Washington, D.C. to Maxwell Air Force Base in Montgomery. So no planes flying side by side with Air Force One, but they plan for everything. It is a control center, a command center in the air. If anything were to happen in the U.S. on the ground and there was an attack, Air Force One could never land and be refueled time after time after time again as the president flies around still commanding troops and they have a high tech high clearance security system up there so it is a mobile command center on air force one and now we're back down to the ground and back on marine one for leg two of this trip yeah you talked about air force one and sometimes we do see those helicopters that fly side uh, alongside of it there are actually two airplanes that are used as air force one and they always do travel together so there is another airplane that looks just like this one that is parked somewhere in the area we don't no, it could mm, be. They they're not going to tell us that information. It could be. 
that's when my time that inside that information. I'll come in. It could be in Birmingham. It could be as far away as Mobile. Uh, chances are it's probably closer somewhere like like Birmingham or somewhere in that area that has a larger airport that can hold it. Uh, it's it's when when it's not Air Force One, it's just known as SAM, either two eight thousand or two nine thousand. Those are the tail numbers on each of those two planes. Uh, SAM, by the way, stands for Special Air Mission, but. Uh, there are always two, just in case. Number one, just in case something happens with the plane the president flew in on, there's always a backup. You can just take the helicopters back to the second plane. Also, that's a security. You know, that's a security function that um, allows uh, allows an option if they need to throw somebody off right. for some reason. Right. But uh, th there are two planes, and, and while they don't travel side by side, they do normally travel together. So this one, the second one may have taken off just a few moments before or a few moments after, but it's going to be somewhere in the area just in case the president needs to use that second one. These aren't your typical helicopters either. Most of them just take off and go straight up in the air. These actually taxi out on the wheels right now. Aaron Davis is still out there at Maxwell Air Force Base. And Aaron, uh, what are you seeing now as Marine One gets ready to lift off, followed by the second helicopter? Yeah, Marine One is slowly going down the tarmac, and you can kind of see members of the press and other security detail that's going to be headed to Troy. And Marine One just took off the ground. Its wheels are off the ground, so someone should start a timer because, like we said, it takes about 15 minutes for them to get from here to Troy. It's off to the right there, too. Those two Osprey helicopters as well. Those will also be side by side in the air just for an added layer of protection. So Marine One, the second helicopter, the big one, and two Osprey helicopters as well will accompany them down to Troy. They, they take no chances anytime the president is on the ground or in the air. And you mentioned these are no regular helicopters. These are not a heli this is not a helicopter that you and I would just hop on. Not that we've ever hopped no. on a helicopter to begin with. But these are incredibly high tech helicopters on the inside. The outside also incredibly high tech and able to withstand just about anything, anything that could happen in the air or on the ground. Well, if anybody's capable, we know it's the Marines and the airmen and all the men and women down there at Maxwell Air Force Base. I know, Bethany, you mentioned this morning, they're no stranger to presidential visits. Vice President Kamala Harris was just here recently. So they're ready. Yep, they are. There you see the Osprey helicopters getting airborne as well. And they will accompany Marine One and the other big helicopter. And we will continue to follow the story of their course heading toward Troy. We have our Sally Pitts and Ashley Bowerman on the ground at Lockheed Martin. So the president is airborne now heading from Montgomery toward Troy. We will continue with your coverage right after this short break. So stay with us.